Hello everyone and welcome to Unity Made Simple. Let's start off with our new project, Jetpack Joyride. So first up, you're going to want to open up Unity. Um, open up the launcher. I'm going to assume you've already downloaded Okay, I just opened 2017. Try opening Unity Hub if you can't find the right version of Unity. I have three Unity versions installed, don't ask why. So first we're going to open up Unity Hub, then click Project. Click new. Um, we're gonna name this Jetpack Joyride. It's gonna be based off the popular game. Click 2D right here. This selection is really weird because it doesn't go down. And just create it wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. We don't need any asset packages yet. So just click create project. Um, Unity will set that up for you. So it'll take like a second or two. All right, guys. Once you're in Unity, uh, let's just get started right away. So you're gonna right-click underneath samples scene, and you're gonna click create, or you're gonna click 2D object, and you're gonna click sprite, and, and let's rename this to character. And let's so we're gonna start off um, by making a character, which I've already actually made. And this is our little guy right here. I exported him as a PNG. In order to import the PNG, we're gonna right-click underneath assets. We're gonna click import new asset. We're gonna find the image which I've called Mr. Character.png and we're gonna click import. Now once our character's here, so you're gonna go to character game object, and you're gonna just drag you're gonna drag this image onto where it says sprite, and boom, we have a character. So you're gonna right-click this, reset to move it to move the guy to the middle. And this guy seems a little big, so I'm gonna set his um, scale to 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 and there you go much more reasonable size so we have our guy right here who's gonna be jetpacking and we're gonna add particles and all that animations all that we're gonna do that later so it's just a nice simple video so to get started we're gonna um, click add component you're gonna type in rigid body rigid body space 2d so you're gonna get this component right here you're gonna click it and boom it added now all these are good except you're going to want to change collision detection to continuous once you're done with that you're going to click add component you're going to click polygon or you're going to type polygon collider 2d and once you're done with that just add component and it'll automatically link and if you go to your scene you can actually see the collider this green line represents your collider so it's actually not like the individual pixels of your drawing it's going to be this green line. That's how Unity is going to detect collisions. So, we have that all set. Let's uh, check out our game, see what happens. And, let's see. Oh, our guy just, he's gone. Our guy just falls down forever. Right, right there, that's a little, that's him. Right there. Alright, so in order to prevent this from happening, we're going to add a floor quickly. So in order to add a floor, so just right click, click create empty, and we'll name this um, floor. And now add a component. Now this time it's not going to be a polygon collider, it's going to be a box collider 2D. So once you do that, you'll see a little green box right here. So click edit collider over here, and edit it so that it goes along the very bottom of your camera. Because you don't want them to go any lower than you can see. Okay, try not to mess up like that. So just drag little squares so you get your floor. And then make it so it's pretty thin, but still has like a noticeable width. There, now we have floor. And we're actually gonna, so you're gonna click this, you're gonna right click it, click duplicate. And we'll, this will be our roof. And all you have to do is click the move tool or click W and all you have to do is just drag it up to the very top of the camera and the camera's thing is this uh, white rectangle by the way and let's see it's at the top yeah it's at the top once it's at the top um, you're gonna go back and let's test it see if our guy stops on his way down and boom he stops and he falls over that's pretty sad let's try that again so we're gonna character constraints, and you wanna freeze its Y position and freeze the rotation. 
Let's try this again. Hopefully our character won't fall over this time. Alright guys, I lied to you. Um, it's Don't click freeze Y. Click freeze X. I don't know how I messed up with that. And there you go. Our character just falls down. He doesn't rotate. He just, he just pops right onto the floor. Now, but you can't do anything, right? There's no game. You just watch the guy fall. So let's start with our first gameplay. So click add component and just type in character and then click new script right here and click create and add and it says right you see this right here C sharps script and it's called character so double click that to open it up in Visual Studio and once Visual Studio opens hopefully okay it has opened so you don't need to delete any of this code um, we're gonna start off with a reference to our rigid body and I'll show you why we need that later and we're just gonna call it RB so it's easy to access and we're gonna have a float which will be called up speed so this will be how fast our player moves upwards like when he activates his jetpack so in our update method which is called every frame we're gonna check if the, if the user is pressing the spacebar in order to do this we're gonna do input dot get key right just get key and we're gonna do key code dot space and we'll make that a if statement alright so if they're pressing space we wanna apply a force upwards so our player accelerates upwards so in order to do this we're gonna do rb dot add force and we're gonna have a new vector 2 0 comma up speed so what this does it adds a new force onto our game object right and that force is just a, a vertical because it has zero it has zero value in the x-axis meaning doesn't affect your horizontal movement because our character is just going to go up and down while the obstacles are the ones that are going to move so let's try it out see if this works and it's not going to work because I messed up so you're going to go to your character and you see where it says rigid body 2d so you're going to click on that and you're going to drag it over to the RB variable and then you can set your up update to something nice um, let's go with 10 10 is a nice number now let's click play and our guy falls down but when you press space look he rockets back up and there's a nice jetpack let's see does this this works you know alright guys now we need to add the particle system because when our guy is going to be going up and down we, we want some particles to make it look cool so in order to do this so you're going to right click on ca your character game object and you're going to click um, effects and you're going to click particle system and there you go that's almost almost it so now what you want to do is you want to go to this shape tab right here and you're going to click cone and you're going to set the arc to something like um, I know 75 and you this rotate button right here and you want to rotate it so that not you want to rotate it rotate it on the right axis if I can select that axis can I okay let's try this you know rotate Yeah, you're going to do this. You're going to rotate it so that it sends out particles in this general direction. And you're going to set the spawn point like this. And let's see. Can we move our position? Let me make this a little lower. Or, yeah, we're going to set it right here to the base of our object. And actually, guys, you guys can just um, set this to zero, this to zero, and just rotate it around, just rotate it around the z axis. So it looks like this, and already our guy has some nice particles, but this looks really boring. So we're gonna set our start speed to a random between two constants. We'll do let's do ten and twenty, and we'll have our we'll have the duration of no, we'll have a start lifetime to one second, and we'll set our emission right here rate over time, and we'll set that to something like fifty. All right, so that's pretty cool. And now let's actually create some particle effects. So I'm gonna create a new image. And I'm just gonna make it like 50 by 50. 50 by 50 will be good. Create and let's zoom in on this. And we'll use um, so I'm actually gonna you have to you're gonna have to fill in the background with black. 
And you're going to have to use an, uh, so I'm going to create a new layer. Actually, I'll just do this, and I'll speed it up so you guys don't have to watch this torture. Compatibility. So now we're gonna import it. So import new asset, and we'll do. All right, guys, we find what this after like three years. So we're gonna see article. as a. Oh, I accidentally saved it as a Photoshop file. Don't. But if you guys save it as a PNG, it will work. Sure, I'm not gonna but promise you that. So you're gonna go to particle systems where it says render. You're gonna click material, and you're gonna click sprites default. So it's gonna look like it's showing a bunch of squares, but don't worry. So we're gonna check texture sheet animation, and we're gonna do sprites. And right here, you're gonna drag in your particle object, and boom, that looks disgusting. Okay, let's try this again. Um, what can we do? We can make this smaller. 0.5. Yeah, and we'll do. We'll set our start color to random between two colors, and random between white and black. And that looks trash. Okay. I'll set it to something random between gray and black. Yeah, okay. So what's... Why does it look trash? Uh, okay, let's create a better particle. And... Oh my god, let's go. Let's go, let's go really fast. Alright, so, um, yeah, I, def I definitely created this, um, let's just, I'm just going to pretend I didn't, um, download it, oh, you didn't see that, so, after you create your particle, you're going to drag it in, and you're going to drag it in, unlike me, there you go, that looks so much cooler, so now, what's going wrong, it's our rotation, so we need to create a rotation right here, and we'll have it as a random between two constants, and let's just up this and let's not up that just up your Z maximum and set it to something like 180 yeah okay so that looks cooler and now what we want is we can have it rotate over time rotation over lifetime and we'll click that and let's see and we'll up our Z rotation, and that looks that looks pretty cool. We'll have it. We'll actually have it as a random between two constants. Have it as zero, and we'll have it at 1080, which is 360 times three. And it looks pretty cool. Um, now some some of the particles are going pretty far, so I'm going to decrease the speed a little to maybe eight and sixteen. And now what we can do is we can enable or we can disable this component so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our character script again and we're going to do first we need to create a reference to the particle system so we can access it so we'll have a public particle system and we call it ps all right so once we have a reference to our particle system we're going to type we're also going to create a private we're gonna create a private particle system dot emission module. This is a new style, so I had to research this because um, the previous one is deprecated apparently. Um, and we're gonna call it em. And so in our start method, we're gonna be like em em equals ps dot get component or not 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 get ps dot emission. That's it. So now it's stored as a variable, and only now can we set it as active or inactive. Um, before there's just one easy variable, but now, you know, they just like to, you know, throw a curveball. Okay, so we're gonna set em dot enabled equals true, and it'll be enabled if 
our jetpack if we're pressing space. Otherwise, we're going to do em.enabled equals false. Now, I don't know if this is going to look smooth, but we can test it out. Let's see. And we already messed up because I did not set the reference. So going to character particle system will be this right here. And okay, now let's see if it works. All right. Looks pretty cool. Well, I, I can say I like that, you know. I think what we're going to do is um, we're just going to lower the lifetime just a little. Um, start lifetime. We'll set that to 0 0.5. Yeah, there you go. And I think we're going to make them decrease in size as they go on. So size over lifetime. Let's check this. And separate axes. Okay. Easy. So what we're going to do here, we're going to edit the graph. So it looks like this. We're going to edit it like this. There you go. There you go. All right. There are X and Y graphs. So it's going to start off bigger and it's going to get smaller, I believe. There you go. That looks much smoother. Actually, because of this, I think we can set our particle lifespan. Let's set it to 0 0.8. See how that looks. Let's see. Will it work? And. Yeah, that looks perfectly fine. No, it doesn't. Let's try this again. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set its start size to a little smaller. To like 0 0.5. And we let's just set the Y size to also 0 0.5. There you go. And that looks much better. We're actually going to increase the lifespan to 1 and let's decrease the max speed to 14 and let's just have it yeah 10 to 12 why does this look weird oh because the start lifetime was not increasing properly 1.5 there you go and I think I think that, that that's, that's, a, that's a good effect Let's, I don't know why my spacebar is affecting that, okay. Yeah, see, so now they're getting smaller. And I think I want to do one last thing before we finish up with this tutorial. I want to make it so they fade out just a little. So we can do color over lifetime. I'm going to check that box. And so right here, am I going to? I don't know what is happening. Can I edit the button color, please? Okay, so we're gonna lower this. So it's gonna fade, or we're gonna add another marker right here with max alpha. So it's gonna start out strong and it's gonna slowly fade. Yeah, there you go. And I don't, you guys don't have to add this. I'm just adding it. To see if it looks cool. It probably does not, but that's besides the point. Yeah, I think that looks cool. It's like it's fading. It's pretty hard to notice. But I think I'm pretty sure it is fading. I think this looks cool. We'll add obstacles next time so it actually looks like we're moving somewhere. And that's going to be the end of the first episode. Hope you enjoyed.